Welcome to Tumamina Teaching. This is your second lesson on the mineral revolution for grade eights. As we were discussing in the previous lesson, the discovery of diamonds really shook South Africa. Many people flocked to South Africa in search for quick riches, especially to Kimberley. And let's talk about Kimberley for a second. Kimberley is found in Griekenland West, and this area was not part of the Cape Colony or the Orange Free State, although these two colonies wanted the area after the discovery of diamonds. Britain initially only wanted their coastline to protect trade between Britain and Eastern countries, but Britain knew after the discovery of diamonds that there's a lot of potential riches in the area. And they had a lot of ties with influential people in Kimberley, like Cecil John Rhodes and Bonnie Bonato, the founders of the De Beers Mining Company. But before we go further, let's look at two important terms that I would like you to know before we continue with the lesson. A mining claim may refer to a parcel of land containing valuable mineral in its soil or rock, which a miner takes hold of with the right to occupy and mine. Usually these claims were 10 by 10 meters. A monopoly exists when a person or enterprise is the only supplier of a particular commodity, in this case diamonds. Monopolies are thus characterized by a lack of competitors and high prices. Let's talk about labor during the start of the mineral revolution in South Africa. As I said, many people flocked to Kimberley in search for quick riches. They would buy a little piece of land, a claim, and then start digging in the hope of finding something of great value. It was very disorganized. You can think about it. All these little claims, people searching for diamonds, and it was just a little bit of chaos. But this changed, however, when the De Beers company monopolized it by buying out all these claims and bringing it under the same name. At the start, the De Beers company used migrant laborers. A migrant laborer would be a laborer who traveled from very far to work at these mines. And they would only gather enough money to buy things like basic farming equipment and guns and things like that, and then they would return home. This was a bit of a problem for the mine owners. And to counter this problem, they built mining compounds. Now, a compound is a type of residence built close to the mines, and then the mine workers would work the whole day and then go directly to these mining compounds without being able to go anywhere else. There were a lot of advantages and disadvantages to this system, but the advantages mostly applied only to the mine owners. The mine owners were able to limit diamond smuggling. And if you think about it, a diamond is so small and so valuable, it must have been very attractive for mine workers to smuggle these diamonds. But the compound system limited the smuggling business. Besides that, the mining owners were able to develop a disciplined workforce with the help of these compounds. With regards to the disadvantages, there were many for the mine workers. Compounds were built poorly. Many of the beds were made of concrete and some of the rooms didn't even have windows. Food supply sometimes lacked and a lot of people, a lot of men together for long periods of time, developed bad habits like the misuse of alcohol and gambling. Besides all these things, being away for a long period of time hurt the family unit as they came back to their families after their journey to the mines. This marked the end of the second lesson and you're welcome to complete the activity below and then we'll see each other next time. Tumamina Teaching is a non-profit company and we wish to achieve two things. Firstly, we would like to produce high quality caps aligned lessons and secondly, we would like to distribute these lessons free of charge to anyone who needs it. If you'd like to partner with us, please look at the description below. There's a link that you can follow for more information.